Ungemtrat. Hello everyone, you are listening to You've Got Five Options show with Marta and Anna. Join us while we are solving yet another life challenge. And if you decide to share your problem with us, yours can be next. Hello everyone, this is Marta. And this is Anna. And this is Lesse. And this is... You got five options. Yay! I'm very excited because we are doing this differently every single time. And it somehow works. It works better than when I was trying to inspire you to say it together. So I'm very happy that you like this one. So welcome, everyone. We are back with yet another challenge. Surprise, surprise. But I have to say that I think it's our first challenge on friendship topic. Wait, is it? Yeah, I think so. I don't think we have had any friendship related topics so far. So this will be the first time we are talking about friendship. And it seems that it's going to be a face like the love face that you've got five options because our live show is also about friendship. Mm -hmm. So yes, we have a friendship challenge. Actually, you are right, Marta. This is our. Yeah, now I'm I was trying the the face I had was not like a a, a face of a detachment from the situation. I was really trying to figure out and you are right. We we never solved the friendship challenge. So Mm -hmm. yeah, something new at you've got five options. And we are all friends here and no one really capitalize on that. Guys, come on. It's like we are experts on friendship. Amen. Fist bump. Are, are we? Totally. Yeah. Although when I look at the number of subscribers uh, at our YouTube channel, I'm not sure <laughs> <laughs> how well that friendship goes. Yeah, because you, you gave a very high uh, level that y- you will be friends with someone when he will he or she will get five subscribers, right? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, maybe people are a little bit like, whoa, this is too much for me. Um, and I just said one subscriber is if you subscribe, you are my friend. Yeah, standards, you know, standards. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> what does it mean? I will not reflect on that now. No, let's, let's 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 not do that to ourselves. Let's not go there. Okay, <laughs> Anna, maybe we should just move on to standards. <laughs> <laughs> I will not curse, but what? <laughs> Okay, I have low standards. <laughs> that's no. why you were my friend? What the <laughs> hell? It's like, what is it? No, that's why I said that it makes no sense to reflect on exactly. these standards because it no matter which not. way you take it, uh, we are best friends. So, Yes, that's true. Okay, so Anna, will you please uh, read Caroline's challenge? Yes, I will. So we have received a challenge from a girl that called herself Caroline and here it goes. I have had a very close friend for many years. A few months ago, there was a misunderstanding which involved our children and husbands that has spoiled so far deep and honest friendship. We have been in contact several times, but it's not the same. It's a friendship that I value a lot. So I have reached out a couple of times, but my friend seems colder. I am not sure if I should give her some space or confront her directly. It's a delicate matter because it involves people that we both love. I am not sure what to do. What would you advise? Oh, holy crap. Yeah, that seems like quite a difficult situation. Yeah. Because usually when you have a conflict with a close friend, it can be pretty painful. Mm -hmm. And if it additionally involves close people like your children Mm -hmm. and your partners, that's quite, you know, like a delicate situation. Yeah, I would say that um, because uh, we don't really know what the uh, misunderstanding was about but it involved children and husbands and uh, from um, my experience which is not my experience but from things i have heard or experienced through my friends or other people uh, it's always very very difficult when you are having a misunderstanding or a or a conflict where you have friend on one side and your partner or another because those are two very close people to you and you know uh, th- that can be really really tricky and messy totally so basically that challenge is still solvable mm-hmm, absolutely 
Every challenge is solvable. Yeah, we just need to probably have slightly tune up <laughs> on the delicate and diplomatic mm-hmm. part of it. So, uh, of course, uh, we uh, we totally acknowledge that it should be treated with care, this mm-hmm. kind of situation, uh, because other people are also involved. It's much easier when it is only between the two of you. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to other people, it may be more tricky. Mm-hmm. But, dear Caroline, we have prepared five options for you. Surprise, surprise. And those options can be tried individually. They can be combined. You can try one, then another. And uh, we, of course, have our considerations, our tips. We are reflecting on advantages and disadvantages of those options. But, of course, at the end of the day, you are the one who chooses uh, which option to select. And I would say that for you to be able to select the right option, I would really encourage you to do a couple of things. One thing would be to ask yourself the mother of all questions. The mother of all questions. How important that friendship is for you? Because that really is the key point here when choosing what to do about that situation. I would also strongly encourage you to use your knowledge about your friend. So whenever you are reflecting on any of the options, you know her personality, you know which uh, situation she responds well to, which not. And of course, as always, your gut feeling. So which option you actually feel would be the best one for you to choose? Yeah, I think you asked a very interesting question, a.k.a. the mother of all question, how important that friendship is to you. And I think for some people at the beginning, it might sound like, uh, what do you mean? It's it's friendship, so it should be important. Like, can I just let it go because we had misunderstanding? And I think that people many times think like, you know, uh, yeah, friendship should be important, but actually we grow out of some friendships. You know, we sometimes we are being friends with people that we shouldn't be friends with anymore because for some reasons we simply, I don't know, went on different roads with our development. And I think that it's a natural thing that some friendships might end. And then you stick into a friendship because of, for instance, being used to or feeling guilty or feeling uncomfortable with breaking the contact. contact. So that's why I just wanted to put this comment because at the beginning when I heard the question, I was like, yeah, that might be confusing because how important that friendship is. You know, you had a small little, not not small little, but you had a misunderstanding and it's like, well, would you give up on friendship? But maybe there is something more behind the misunderstanding. So it's a very valid question, Marta, I believe. Yeah, so basically that was a little bit of a reflection on how could you select which option is the best one. And I will tell you now which are the options. So option number one is put empathetic glasses on. You know your friend well. What may be the deeper reason for her avoiding the contact? Because you have been in contact and she seems to be colder. So maybe there is something deeper there. Option number two would be confront her in a loving way. Initiate an open conversation. Option number three would be give her space. Wait and see what happens. Option number four would be let her go. Maybe that friendship no longer serves you. And option number five, play pen friends. Write her a letter. So some of those options are, of course, the ones that you actually mentioned in the challenge description, asking whether they are good or not to uh, go after. So we will, of course, uh, tell you what are our considerations when it comes to those options. But we will, of course, start with option number one. Put empathetic glasses on. You know your friend well. What may be the deeper reason for her avoiding the contact or for her being colder? That's like a a really good question to ask yourself. And, um, you know, you write that you've been friends for a long time. So if you've been friends for a long time, you know if these kind of situations have uh, occurred before. But that also means that you are able to evaluate if the situation itself was severe enough to cause her, you know, getting cold or if there is something deeper. Mm -hmm. I I totally agree. I was actually just thinking about it, Marta. And, you know, sometimes you might have an argument about something, but uh, that argument about something is just a signifier or or some kind of a last straw. 
because there was some underlying problem in the past or, or just for a longer period of time. Another thing is that I cannot stop thinking about is that, you know, the husbands, children are involved. And then usually the, this just gives another dimension to the problem, because let's say I will just speculate, but I could imagine a situation when, for instance, you are in a conflict or misunderstanding with your friend and the husband's got involved. And then, for instance, your husband might not encourage you to rebuild the friendship, but actually hold you back because he got somehow upset about the situation because maybe it involved him. So sometimes maybe uh, the partner could be like, you know what? You should not talk to her. You know, they did us bad or something. So actually, that is also something that could be happening. Of course, it's a speculation, but there are situations like this when our partners are um, trying to, you know, mingle within our friendships and our friends trying to mingle with our partnerships. So this is a va valid, uh, valid point. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, think about why might have she be really cold now and think about maybe that situation has actually, you know, really kicked her in some of the pain points or maybe it has something to do with her partner. It's really worthwhile reflecting on it. But putting empathetic glasses on when it comes to any kind of conflict with any kind of relationship is always a really beneficial exercise because when we fight, we get hurt and we see everything through our own glasses from our pain <laughs> point of view because she told me this and that because her husband did this and that because her kids or whatever how it happened you feel it through your pain and the thing is that you are right it is your pain and you have all the right to feel all those emotions because they are yours and they are true to you however she is a completely different person that has a completely different personality and completely different experiences. And she might be seeing that situation completely differently and might be having her completely different pain about that situation. And that's where the beauty kicks in. When we start seeing the conflicts without the right and wrong perspective, but simply accepting that exactly same situation might be seen completely different by two people. It's amazing when you ask people to describe the same situation. They can give you completely different viewpoints. It's mm -hmm. really amazing. And it actually brings very little value to try to determine who is right and wrong. Mm -hmm. Because it's totally. about emotions. It's about how you get hurt. And how you get hurt is determined by your personality and by your previous experiences. So putting empathetic glasses on and trying to understand your friend and what might be going on in her head could be helpful in you trying to approach her and approaching that situation to ensure the actual resolution. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I totally agree. And here is, uh, as I said, because that goes now on my head, you know, there is a uh, feelings of your friend and the way she got hurt by the situation, but also, you know, the environment. So you have also families involved. And uh, I just remember situations. I think I have never had a situation where um, my partner would encourage me to end a friendship or anything like this. But for instance, it, it can happen with parents. I remember, you know, sometimes uh, my mom had an opinion about a friend of mine or had an opinion about a boyfriend of mine. And then, you know, uh, even if there was a certain type of a fight between and I told my mom and then I'm OK with that person, my mom is, let's say, could say, yeah, but that person, you shouldn't get friends with uh, her or him because, you know, this happened and so on. So actually, then I felt pressure from my mom not to have, again, that kind of a very good contact or very frequent contact because my mom had an opinion. So actually, people who are your family and are around you can also influence you to the point that even if you want to rebuild the friendship, you still feel like, OK, maybe I shouldn't do it because this will cause me some problems within my marriage or with my parents or whatsoever. So this is a that there are two things here, you know, how she got individually hurt by the situation, what might hurt her and what are the surroundings, you know? I think even though I think the situation has to be treated with great uh, diplomacy because it involves all other people, of course. I still think that 
in order to resolve that situation between the two close friends, they will have to both come out of being able to leave the other people behind in a sense. If the husband is, for example, discouraging Mm -hmm. (laughs) resolution to that friendship, it is up to the friend to decide whether she's going to go up for it or whether she's going to discuss it with her husband and say, look, I know you feel hurt, but that's my friend, my lifelong friend. Mm -hmm. I really want that relationship to work out. So I acknowledge that you feel hurt, offended or whatever, but I will go after that friendship, Mm -hmm. for example. Or you can be like, my husband is much more important for me. So I want to stand on his side and I don't want to try to resolve that conflict. So of course, if the friend feels this way, if she will follow what the partner's suggestion is, we don't know if that's the case. Maybe yeah. that's not the case at all. Exactly. Then there is very little chance to have that situation resolved. So, yeah. But we have to speculate because we don't really have much of the details here. So, yeah. Yeah. So I would still, when looking for resolution, I would isolate first the two friends mm-hmm. and fixing their relation between each other. And then you can go and extend it Uh, to the Mm -hmm. partners and the families because it can only work if the two of them want to, are open and would like to resolve that conflict. So, Lesa, do you have any experience with uh, conflict? Uh, I don't have had a conflict like that where, I mean, of course, I've had just friends in general where sometimes contact seems to disappear or like they become distant in a way. And I think the way I used to react was when I was younger, you know, was very emotional. Like I thought about me, like this hurts me. I didn't think about the other person. That's something I've only started doing very recently. And it's kind of come by itself because, you know, you get more experience as you get older and get more perspective on things. Uh, So I've started to think more about Well, actually, they are going through a lot right now. They are under a lot of stress, pressure from work or from school, you know. Maybe they have to handle both at the moment and they can have a lot of uncertainty in their life. So they need time also to figure out their own life right now. And I can't expect them, you know, to always be there for me because maybe they also just need a bit of space right now to figure things out. Uh, So I just think friends in general, people I know, sometimes, you know, they... You don't always keep the contact you had before, but then they come back, you know, sometimes and sometimes they maybe don't. But it's that kind of thing of seeing it from their point of view. It's very important to think that way. I totally agree. And you actually touched upon something. I think this is actually one of the options uh, that the space gives space and time. But you touched about about something important that I think we are recycling in almost every challenge, you know, not to take things so personally Mm. and not to think that everything is about me. And every, you know, mood or reaction of another human being is targeted against me or towards me. So it's actually very important because because, yeah, this is true, you know, that situation, that colder situation could also be that the friend is coping with some other things, you know, in her life. So that was actually quite a quite a nice input here, Lassa. But to wrap up the first option, trying to understand the friend, putting that empathetic glasses on and trying to see the situation from her point of view, that has the benefit of you will have more understanding. But the bigger benefit is that you will be able to come to any kind of conversation with a more open heart and with being able to open up to both your point of view and her point of view. So no matter which of the other options you would go after, option number one is a very good one for precisely for conflict resolution very good a very good baseline basically to start okay so option number two is confront her in a loving way initiate an open conversation Mm, that can be tough yeah i think it sounds so uh, easy when you think about it friendship friendship we are close friends but actually that can be tough after a conflict and caroline has mentioned that she was trying to how how it was we have been in contact several times but it is not the same uh and she is colder but it doesn't really i cannot read from this directly that caroline was trying to ask her directly why are you colder why things are different it's more like you know they were in contact she notices the difference but she doesn't approach it am i what is your feel on this yeah so my feel is that it doesn't state in the challenge description that they have ever talked 
about the situation. It doesn't state that she has uh, directly asked her, look, uh, am I seeing it correctly? Uh, mm -hmm. That you are not in the same contact as we were before. So that's why it's a very valid option to consider. And confrontation, it's quite a strong word and it yes. can be very scary. And has a bit of a negative connotation. Yeah, but that's why I said, you know, totally in a loving way. way. So w what I want to uh, say in that option is to have that open dialogue, that direct conversation about what has happened and how we both feel so that we can resolve that situation. You know, I have to say that now when I think about it, it really can be challenging for people because I was thinking it's so natural because like Marta is my best friend and she's awesome and I'm awesome and we are awesome together. We also fall into some sort of misunderstanding from time to time, not a big one. The last big one was when we were 17 and someone didn't send someone a message and it was a big drama for three months. We haven't <laughs> spoke for three months because of that. But we were teenagers, so please forgive us. But even now we fall into some sort of conversations where there is a misunderstanding or, or something. We talk straight away and I got so used to that, that for me it's like at the beginning it was mind blowing. Well, of course you have to have a direct conversation, an open conversation, duh. But then I thought about other relations in my life. For instance, with my parents, where many times we had a situation that there is an argument, a fight, and there is no resolution afterwards. You wake up next day and you pretend like nothing happened. And actually, I had a couple of relationships like that in my life. And it, it is like this. Some people are avoiders. They are simply avoiding resolving that. They, they try to like yeah, pretend that yeah, nothing happened or they are just getting colder or something. So I'm sorry because I was just mind blown by the fact that something that was for me so obvious actually doesn't necessarily have to be obvious for everyone because even in my life, I can find those relations when I could not resolve things by open conversation. It's pretty amazing, but it actually, it requires courage to go to someone with an open heart and say, look, I felt really hurt when this and that happened, when that situation with your husband or my children or your children, my husband, it really hurt my feelings because A, B and C. Totally. It, it really, and doing it in a loving way, being able to actually put your heart on your hand, you know, yeah. <laughs> be so vulnerable, go to someone and say about your pain, you may for sure be running some things like, oh, this was just stupid, I should just forget about it, we should just move on and, and so on. And there is this one part, being vulnerable, being brave enough to actually go and say what's your pain and then on the other hand you also have to be capable of listening and taking in what was painful for the other side so you also have to be able to really deeply listen without running your shit in the background of how painful and difficult it was for you but you actually might hear something that it will be difficult for you that you may have done some pretty bad shit to that person as well sorry for my language totally. so totally, you know Marta. it requires courage it requires listening skills it requires communication skills so that you can do it in that loving way so that it's not you did this and that and it hurt me and you know and you start blame game and stuff throwing plates and shit so it actually is not that easy and i think that when a pain comes when you have some pain and some time has passed by and you haven't really talked about it and bringing it up now feels awkward and so on maybe you don't even have that experience with that friend because like you say with us we have that experience we have been doing that many times so we know we can talk to each other about these kind of things but if you have a friend with whom it it has never happened some deep uh, hurt you know deep pain it may actually be very difficult to to approach them in such a way i totally agree and you know it's like um, people when they get confronted and especially when they have a tendency to avoid they might feel like they are being attacked again 
and that kind of conversation could end up in uh, you did, I did, your fault, my fault. So actually, uh, some people are avoiding this uh, open conversations afterwards because they are afraid that it will ignite the misunderstanding or the argument again. And that's why I think it's so valid that first you gave us the first option with the empathic glasses on because then you can prepare yourself better because many times if you are just caught in the act and you start to discuss it turns into a blame game again you know it's like or someone can say why do you you know put salt on old wounds why do we even have to talk about it or are you planning to tell me again what i did wrong and then you can actually accidentally have another argument so i think that's why what well, this is what many people are also afraid i believe that the, it will just you know why do we have to go through this again you know why do we have to talk about this again and that's a very good question mm -hmm. and that there is of course an answer that the biggest advantage of going for that kind of uh, solution is that you actually give an opportunity to heal the wounds and have the resolution exactly so there are risks, mm -hmm. <laughs> there is difficulty to it. So definitely that are the things to be taken under consideration. And if the friend is a horrible confronter and if she is horrible avoider and you know that she's just not going to be able to open up to mm -hmm. open, honest dialogue, that might not be a perfect uh, option for you. Yet it's still a very valid option to consider because that's the one where healing and resolution can happen. Yeah, but I think you also prepared and that will be later a fantastic option if you have to cope with a person who is an avoider or a, a person who is very bad at open discussions. That's the fifth option, which I love, by the way, which was about writing a letter. So I'm really looking forward to discuss this one because this could be a, a solution if, as we said, Caroline, you know your friend the best. And uh, in option number one, Marta said that you should, you know her personality, you know her behaviors. So you know also what will work and what will not work. So if option number two would, would not work, I think option number five then could be, could be fantastic. But you will have to stay tuned for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And uh, before we wrap up that episode, I, I have a question to Lessa. You have mentioned that you put those empathetic glasses on now at your mm. current state when it comes to relations with your people. Yeah. How about those kind of open uh, conversations when people, they do get distant and you try to understand it from their point of view? Have you ever tried having this kind of open dialogue and just asking them directly? Yeah, but not that much, to be honest. <laughs> it's only recently I've been trying to do that, like once. And how twice. did that work out? <laughs> it went how it went. <laughs> okay, <laughs> very, very mysterious. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Was it, it beneficial or? I think it was because, you know, the truth came out in the end. It, it, it wasn't like dramatic or anything mm -hmm. like that. But, yeah. but, you know, I said how I felt about it. Mm -hmm. And I think the other person did as well. Okay. <laughs> Well, that's, yeah. you know, that's a good start, especially let's say if you just mentioned that you are just trying this recently, right? I think it's very difficult for anyone who was not really practicing this. Uh, I think uh, when I was younger, I was also not really good at this open confrontations. Mm. I was uh, I was actually like kind of avoider detacher. I was just like, you know, detaching myself from a person, from a situation. And that was my, as I said, my coping mechanism. Yeah. So I had to learn that through the years. And actually, I learned that with Marta and Marta, actually, you, you also were not so good at those confrontations in the past. We actually had, a, you know, 20 plus years. I cannot believe I said again how many years we know each other. 20 plus years of learning of how to actually do it. And um, based on that, I also learned how to cope with those situations with other people. So it's it's actually a matter of practice, like everything else in life. It's an art it's an art. Yeah, yeah. And, and confrontation sounds really dramatic. It yes. wasn't yeah. like a... <laughs> That's why <laughs> like the loving way was added. Yeah. 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 Or dialogue. Yeah. Yeah. Just dialogue. Open dialogue. Open dialogue, yeah. 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 Exactly. exactly. So, um, dear Caroline, we have given you the first two options. Yes. And we hope that they uh, gave you enough food for thought. Mm -hmm. And if you want to hear the remaining three, please uh, join us in our next episode. And uh, thank you for listening to us. Thank you so very much. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye.
You are listening to You've Got 5 Options show, where we solve your life challenges. Remember that you can visit our website, the5options.com, where you can submit your challenge or find our previous challenges. That's all, folks.